I have here a piece of laboratory equipment that some of you may be familiar with and some of you may not be familiar with. This is called a separatory funnel. Sep funnels are used to separate immiscible liquids. And you get a mixture of, say, oil and water. You pour it inside here, and the lighter material would be on top. Heavier material would be on the bottom. You could see the interface layer between the two. You'd open the stopcock, drain the liquid out to right before it got to where the interface layer was, close it, let out the interface layer, and then go back and separate it. Really kind of a neat laboratory wet technique. Um, we don't do much of that kind of stuff in our high school laboratories anymore, certainly not in large quantities. So you may have some separatory funnels sitting around in drawers and you're looking at them going, what can I use this for? Well, stumbled on something else that you can use these for. And it's a very common concept in high school chemistry, dynamic equilibrium. And in this case, vapor pressure equilibrium, which is in the chapter on liquids and solids, where they talk about the the process of evaporation and condensation taking place at the same rate. And I can illustrate that with a separatory funnel in, in kind of a neat way. And it also, it also shows a way to get kids more involved in, in a demonstration and, and give them a, an experience that they're going to remember uh, after they walk out of chemistry. And, and I think something that we as science teachers, chemistry teachers, really need to keep in mind is that not all of our students are going to go on and be nuclear physicists and brain surgeons and chemists. And in fact, the world would be a rather depressing place if they all did go on and become you know, research scientists. Many of them are going to go on in the arts. They're going to go on in business. They're going to go on in lots of other areas outside of science. But at some point in time, they're going to have to make a decision, a voting decision, about some scientific issue. Or they're going to hear people talk about scientific issues, and they're going to have to respond to that. If they walk out of your class hating science, their gut response when they vote, when they hear an issue, is going to be, those scientists are bad guys. And I'm voting no. On the other hand, and this was my goal as a science teacher, I wanted the 130 kids that I taught science to every year to walk out of my class not hating science. If they learned some chemistry or physical science or physics or whatever science course I was teaching that year, that was cool. That was gravy. But if I could at least get them walking out of that classroom going, science is fun. I don't, it's not for me, but it's not a bad place. And those guys that do science are pretty good people. I can believe in what they're doing. Then, then you know, they're liable to take a little more time to think about their decision before it's like, no, I don't want anything to do with it. So part of this demonstration is just to illustrate, hey, here's a way I can get kids involved and give them a good experience and have them leave the classroom. On the other hand, I can do something really elegant with equilibrium chemistry that there's a picture of in my textbook and I can show it to them in the classroom, and that, that's kind of neat. So anyhow, I need a volunteer, and Sue has volunteered to do this with me. So thank you. You can put your goggles on, and I'll bring mine around. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a little bit of a volatile liquid. You know what a volatile liquid is, I'm sure, and inside this flask. This is acetone, by the way, nail polish remover. You can put your hands behind your back. So, or do you have nail polish on? No. OK, we're in good shape. All right, so I'm going to let all of this run down in here. I put in some, and uh, I'll close it up and put the stopper on. Now, it's a volatile liquid. Inside here right now, it's evaporating. There's more gas molecules in here because of the evaporation of the liquid. I'm going to kind of swirl it around a little bit. And I don't think you can see it. This is one of those things, again, where on a molecular level, this is really cool. And remember, we spent most of the year talking about the fact that we're chemists, so we live inside the container, and we live with the molecules. And so you're going to kind of visualize yourself as the incredible shrinking chemistry student now. And you're down inside there watching the molecules, and you can see them evaporating and bopping up, into the, up in here. And when they get up in here, they're pounding on the side of the container saying, let me out, let me out, let me out. 
because they're moving very fast and they want to get out of there. So that's, that's kind of exciting. And they're exerting pressure. So since more of them are up in here now, because some of this liquid has evaporated, the pressure on the inside is going to be higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I open this thing, and this is going to be your challenge now. If I open this thing and the pressure on the inside is higher, what am I going to hear? Very good. <laughs> Very good. I, in fact, I wasn't sure you'd know that. So I had it written down over here. And you'll notice that it says, if it's higher pressure, I'll hear That's the higher pressure sound. Now, the interesting thing about this is for the rest of the year, you're going to be our authority on that. Any system that we work with for the rest of the year, if I'm not sure about whether it's a higher pressure on the inside or a lower pressure on the inside, I'm coming to you, and you're going to be our authority. Because in a few moments, I'm going to open this thing, and you're going to listen and decide if it's a higher one. Now, I've kind of cheated. You got the answer already. What's it sound like if the pressure's lower? <laughs> Very good. Yeah. That's it. That's the, that's the sound. that it's Because now it's pulling it in. So, it's, so we got that one. We got... Got it. If it's higher? Okay. And, exactly. and then what does it sound like if the pressure on the inside and the outside are the same? Nothing. Well, it doesn't make any noise at all, so you should probably go with Nothing. things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. No sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's just... See, obviously a science teacher, because you answered the question. My students would just sit there and stare at me when I asked that question, and I'd go, that's exactly right. Makes no sound, but they would never say no sound. Okay, so we're listening now, okay? We're listening. And it's conceivable maybe it's lower pressure, so I want to make that distinction that. Or, okay. okay, so listen carefully. What's that? Yeah, so the pressure on the inside was? Higher. Higher, all right, so now I want to swirl this around inside here a little bit, give it some time, and I'm going to open it again. I want you to listen. Ooh, same sound, right? Okay, so it's still higher. And that makes sense, right? Because liquid's still evaporating. Because mm -hmm. I know liquids evaporate. Okay, so I'll swirl it around. Listen again. What'd you hear that time? Bit. Oh, yeah, but it was really quiet. I wonder why. I guess I didn't shake it as much, mm -hmm. right? Could be the case. So let me shake it some more this time. Shake it around some more. Shake it around some more. Okay, this must be great on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Listening? Did you hear anything? A little bit. A little bit. Okay, let's swirl it around some more. All right, let's try one more time. Did you hear anything that time? <laughs> no. No sound that time. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. It didn't go So, what must be true? If it doesn't go or the pressure on the inside must be? The Equal. same as the pressure on the outside. How can that be? Because the liquid's still evaporating. What else could happen? Well, eventually we've got liquid evaporating inside here. After a period of time, now we've also got liquid condensing going back in. At some point, I reach vapor pressure equilibrium. So now I've established vapor pressure equilibrium, so when I open the stopcock, no sound. Pressure on the inside, pressure on the outside are the same. I've also got a student now who is an authority on any container I use in my classroom for the rest of the year can tell me what the pressure is. And I'll, I'll bring Sue back up 10 times during the year when we talk about pressure and get her up and go, hey, now listen to that. Or even just sitting at their seat, if I open something in the can, go, Whoosh. hey, that pressure was greater, that pressure was less, because they know that sound, because that's kind of cool. All right, so this is an equilibrium. Mm -hmm. How can I mess up equilibrium? What, what could I change easily? What conditions? And you can say temperature. It's temperature. okay. Very good. I could change temperature. <laughs> and so what I think I'll do is I'll cool this off some. I've got some ice water inside this cute little red cup. Um, and I'm going to make this easier so we don't have to listen to the sound. I'm going to put some liquid in the other end of this thing. And I'm just going to let it cool for a very short period of time. Lowering the temperature should lower the vapor pressure. So now the pressure on the inside should have gone down. Uh -huh. If I open the stopcock, the red liquid in here should get pulled back inside. And we'll see. 
Now there's some of you sitting out there looking at this and going, this is one of those demos that will never fail. <laughs> because when I open this, gravity's gonna pull the liquid in anyhow, <laughs> and it won't matter. Do I care about that? No. <laughs> But if I do open it, not only do you get the liquid pulled in, but you get the sound that goes with it. So you've got both of them going on. And that's kind of cool. And that's fun. You can do the reverse, by the way, which I'm not going to do this time, and raise the temperature either by warming it in your hands or putting it in a cup of hot water. Put the liquid in the top up here, open the stopcock, and it'll shoot the liquid up in the air. And that's kind of cool, too. And so, you know. Something else to use a separatory funnel for. It's sitting around in a drawer. You don't do any labs anymore where you use SEP funnels, but it's a great way to set up that dynamic equilibrium with vapor pressure that there's a picture of in your textbook. And there's in every high school book I have ever seen in my life, there is a picture of water or alcohol or something like that, and they show molecules escaping into the vapor state and molecules condensing back into the liquid state. And they say, this is when vapor pressure equilibrium has been established. We can do that in here. You can do it before you've talked about vapor pressure. You can do it afterwards. Uh, and it's kind of neat. The other part of it, and I think this is really important, Sue's going to remember, not maybe an enormous about, amount about chemistry, but she's going to remember <laughs> and no sound. Mm -hmm. And every time she opens a can of her favorite beverage and she hears that <laughs> She's going to know the pressure on the inside was greater. And she's also going to probably remember that part of my chemistry class. She probably won't remember anything about vapor pressure, but that doesn't matter because she's going to have a good sense, a good feeling because it was kind of fun. Again, a nice way to use a separatory funnel.